Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models. In today's video, I'm going to paint and weather Bandai's 11144th scale AT AT or AT AT Walker. This is going to be a full step by step guide using color modulation, ink and acrylic washes, chipping, and how to use oils safely on Bandai products. Remember, in all my videos, you can skip back and forward by clicking on the chapters in the description below. So go grab a glass of blue milk and let's get started. I originally painted this kit over two years ago and it's sat in my cupboard ever since. I used Tamiya Acrylics, uh, Royal Light Grey XF80 and Sky Grey XF19 and I added some panel variation here and there over my usual black basing technique. I've got a brace here of MRP lacquer paints that I'm going to use to just change up the current tones that are on the already painted walker. Uh, I've got navy white, light arctic grey, that'll be my highlights, and then just to change some of the panels, I'll use some of this light gold grey, and I'm going to add a little bit of shading effects with the light sea grey. So, let's get started. With the colour modulation, what I'm trying to do is break up the panels even more, using the MRP paints to model in different tones. I'm also hitting up the edges up to the top of the body for more extreme highlights and adding some streaking effects within that paint. Now if you check out the original references from Empire Strikes Back, the paint on those models was very heavily weathered. So on the legs I'm adding more shading around the moving parts using the darker MRP mixes. This helps give a lots of volume to the bottom of the model. So after applying a gloss coat on all the parts, I've, um, as you can see they're nice and shiny, I've started to add some washes and details. And the washes I use on Bandai to get away from having to see if the plastic's going to explode on you is acrylics and inks. So what I've done here is I'm just using Vallejo's acrylic washes, three main colours, umber, black and sepia, just here on the palette and I can mix, and mix them up when I need to, and some ink washes, again from Vallejo, this brown and black, and I've just made a dirty grungy, grungy one here. I just apply them with a nice thin brush and as you can see getting some nice staining as well, but I'm trying to do panel line washes and pin washes in all these recessed details and then adding a little bit of staining. I'll probably do more of that with oils at this stage because you can use a, a Q-tip or a cotton bud. Okay, just grab one of these, dip it into the, into the mix. Actually, I need to thicken that up a bit. Thin it down a bit, I should say, just a bit of water. And you can just apply the Apply it like that and it makes a nice staining effect if that's what you want. And if you want to remove it, just get the other side and off it goes. So I'm going to now switch to, I've done enough there, I'm happy with that for a base sort of effect. I'm now just going to hit all the panel lines here. So you can see here I've applied a panel line wash to these top areas here using the uh, acrylic washes. I just use a liner brush and I just let it fill into that panel line there like that. You might need to do it a couple of times to fill up. I'll do this front one here next so you can see how it, how it works. So just touch the panel line with the liner and because I've got a gloss coat that should run. If there's any overshoot, that's okay. I'm just going to let this dry first before I apply it all, before I wipe it all away. So I'll just move that wash into the, into the line. Like that. Okay, that should be almost dry. Get my cotton bud and just very carefully just pick up the bits that were too much. I've got a little bit there up the top. And there we are. So just go all the way around the model and as you can see I've started to do here. And I'll just change up the tones where I think it's necessary. So if I want to go for a, some of this sepia for a bit more, a bit more grunge and grime I'll just add it there like that. Okay and like underneath here in the in the vents and so forth I'll add a little bit more, more grime. So you can do this without any uh, fears of of having any damage to your Bandai plastic if you haven't glued it all together or you haven't if uh, you know instead of a instead of using enamels. 
Using inks and acrylic washes instead of enamel solves a problem of your Bandai kits falling apart. Yeah, the plastic doesn't like enamels or petroleum based products and all those nooks and crannies. It makes the plastic brittle as the joints are under strain and there's nowhere for the gas to go. So you'll come back to your model the next day in a dozen pieces. So the washes are done on the at at. I'd just like to go over a quick overview before we get to the next stage. I've reassembled it because I'm going to put a flat coat uh, to lock this all in. You can see I've done quite a bit of staining here in here in the moving parts okay on the legs and particularly on the bottom because the bottom's going to get hit with quite a bit of dirt and things. I'll just turn this over slowly so you can see the effects that it's done. It's really up the contrast particularly adding or filling in these slots and things. Now you may have noticed here and there like for example here you can use these washes for some streaking effects. I prefer to use oils for that and normally we use enamels, but you can also use them for filter effects. So I've really gone to town inside these moving parts, okay, and given them a sepia or a rusty tone. And that's going over, over the entire model. So I'll hit that again with oils, but it's good to do layer upon layer and also to clean up any, you know, there's always going to be a few mistakes you've made there. I've made that run a bit too big, then there's a splodge there, so you can cover that up with, with oils. Chipping. I'm going to use two primary colors for this, a dirty black and a burnt umber. I've just placed them in this palette here, and I'll be applying them with a 00 Winsor & Newton brush for some very, very fine chips. But for the uh, more bulkier chips, I've just got a piece of sponge here which I've put in some tweezers and all you do is you just dab it in the concoction in there and take off most of the, the paint and just dab it on. So I'm going to get stuck into it. So I'll start with the lower legs. I've already got some basic chipping and some scorch marks there from uh, the application of the washes, but hopefully you can see there, I'm just adding some more details here with the sponge. This is just the gray. Okay. See then a lower leg, I'll try to zoom in, I'll come around this side, and that's you're already seeing there's some overspray from the the washes. I've left it there on purpose for the, the smudging. Let's do the feet. So the sponge is great because it, it gives you the ability to quickly lay down a lot of random but controlled scratches. So you can see that there. Go around to this next one. So the reason I've left, I want to uh, reassemble the, the walker is because I want to make the chipping to be relevant. I don't want to have to have to do the part separately and go, oh God, I shouldn't have put the chips in that area because it doesn't make any sense. So I'm starting to get a little bit losing my, my paint. So I'm going to go over to the burnt umber here and just add a little bit more burnt, literally burnt effects because it's going to go down to the raw steel. See that there? Come around to this one. I'm very lightly applying this. I'm using almost no pressure. There's actually a fair bit of fair bit of paint on that sponge. I'm off screen. I'm dabbing that on a piece of paper towel. So I'll do this one. This is just raw burnt umber now. Okay. And on the grey there, it really stands out. So we're getting some nice chips. I'll do the feet so you can see that on camera. So this, these sort of effects where you're putting a lot of chips down, uh, it, to me it doesn't make any sense to use a brush, but when I do the upper hole and we do some of the areas around here, I'm going to be a lot more controlled. So don't just think you have to use one technique over an entire model. Add and choose the right technique for the right area. Now to move to some more controlled chipping, where I'm going to use my double O brush and I'm just going to hit the corners and little access areas here and I'm probably going to put my loop on my magnifier because my eyesight's going Here we come to what is usually the favorite part of modeling for me, and that's doing the final weathering using mainly oils. The products I'm going to use in 
uh, finishing off the weathering because I've done all the chipping now is uh, some oil brushes from uh, MIG, Ammo by MIG and Windsor and Newton. I'll be using some of these tools. I'm just going to quickly go over why I'm using these colors and why I'm using these tools. We'll start with the oils themselves. Now the oil brusher, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically a little makeup, a little, little thing that's been repurposed with an applicator. Now the applicator is not exactly precise, so I always use my um, Kalinsky brushes in O or double O size, so I can do real precise application of that oil because I want it in a real precise spot and with this scale I'm going to have to get quite neat and tidy so that's my three main brushes for applying them so what I'll do is I'll put some of them out onto my to my favorite palette okay and so I can mix them on there and, and what have you uh, going back with brushes the way I then blend them is I use some of these rounds okay to stump them or to blend them in place. Sometimes I use the dagger for streaking and for straightening up my application. And then we have the wisp brushes, which if you've seen my MiG-31 video, and I'll put a link up here so you can have a, have a look, uh, that's how I like to do very long streaks and lay it on. So that's the main brushes I'll be using. I'll just go over, oh, and the last thing, odorless paint thinner. I like to use the Artist Mona Lisa one, and I use it very, very, very sparingly. I try to do this as dry as possible. Let's go over the colors quickly, and then I can, we can get straight onto the thing. All right, so I've only got the Winsor Newton Titanium White because I don't have a white ore brusher. Great paints, uh, one tube will last your lifetime of modeling. The main color I'll be using today is Starship Filth, which is very appropriate, and that's a really good uh, shadow color. It's a very good... Uh, streaking for dark streaks and what have you and if you're doing Star Wars models this is pretty much the main oil brusher you'll need uh, for just changing the tones and doing some filtering of the base paint I'll use a bit of medium gray and buff as well as a titanium white so you can see that's the three colors I'll be using to to tone everything down and then the two major big kahunas I guess you could say there's a rust color and a very very dark color we've got rust and dark brown so, let's get started. I've started on the inside of the legs here. You can see that I've already added some rust tones and some streaks and stainings here. And I'm just on, I've just started on the outside of these parts. I'll just turn him over on underneath. That added just some basic staining with the oils. You can see they're coming out of these parts. And on the other side, we've got a bit more intense streaking there and on the, the back leg there's some stains coming out as well so I did that just to just to try the different colors and different um, i'm also using some of the grays there to stain some of these panels because they're a little bit stark some of them so i'm just changing them up so let's get started on the outside here and what i'll do is first i'm going to add some shadows so i'm going to grab my first i'm going to use the starship filth which is a, a dark gray okay and i'm just going to add shadow underneath here and I can immediately see that there's a dog here on my brush <laughs> great all right so also in this little crevice I'll just accentuate there is a wash in there but I'm going to add a bit more and in here as well and then I'll get my blending brush the round and I'm just going to push push that in and you can see as I push in and it comes out you get more of a shadow effect and if I drag that down I'm getting a slight stain but I'm just going to diffuse it push it up and down push it up and down and as it gets dragged out see there we're getting a, a nice shadow sort of stain effect so I can keep doing that and I'll add a bit more just to layer it in particularly on the middle here middle parts and I might just add a little bit of a hint on the edges of this panel Made a bit of a mess, which is fine because you can clear that up again. Happy accident, look at that. I've got some nice staining coming down there. Now my brushes are completely dry. There's no oil or enamel thinner on these. And there we are, I've got some nice staining already. Just, just changing up those panels. 
The next thing I want to do is add some much darker. So I'm using the dark brown. Okay, and I'm going to very slightly, and again, I've got the bloody dog hair. Penny the dog's been in here. <laughs> and I'm going to add a lot more. You can see the tones changing on that really quickly. So this is going to simulate sort of grease and grime that's accumulating in these pistons. But then just to make that shadow just even a little bit more, and I'm barely using any oil here. I hope you can see this. Okay, probably should do this upside down. But I'm just touching and letting it flow in to there to get a, a fake shadow effect. See that? Now I won't blend in the the uh, dark brown I've put in these side of these pistons. I'm just going to let that settle in there, and I might do a little bit in the bottom like that. Okay, and I'll work my way down. Now on this front leg, I might leave. I was going to do some rust tones inside that these swivel swivel bits. I might leave them out. Not too much oil. Okay, so I use a very small amount of oil. And I'm just going to put it in there, in both areas, and I'll put a little bit underneath the bolt head here, and a little bit under here. Again, I'm trying to make some shadows and stains. Now you can also use oil if you want to add and make these chips a little bit more intense. That's why I use a, a double O or an O brush. Okay, so I'm going to get my dagger brush, because I can get that point in there a little bit easier. And I'm just going to smear that oil over there, you see that? Inside that half circle and now it looks like a, a greasy turned thing. Right, I'm going to keep on going down the down the leg. If you want to stay with me, let's do some more. Uh, let's see, what are we going to do? Okay, well, I, I definitely need some sort of shadow and stain in there. So first I'm going to lay down some Starship Filth and I might lay down a little bit more than what you've seen before, so that's a good good line there. Okay. I'll let that just dry for a minute or two and I'll do the same with what's left on the brush underneath these two circles just to give them a little bit more depth. Okay, and as we're getting further down the leg you want it to be dirtier and dirtier because it makes sense. Because you know it's that's the stuff it's stomping into. Now I'm using the soft end, the soft round. And I'm just going to streak that down. So I'm creating some stains there and some very light streaking. And then what I'll do with the brush is I'll come down this way and I'm just going to stomp in there okay and I've got first layer of the shadow effect Very carefully just like Bob Ross says some hair and some air I'll go back and forth and just get that in now the good thing with oils you just don't do one application you've got to do several so I'm going to put in a little bit more Okay. And again, stamp it in. All right, so we're getting getting a bit more there. I might actually use my dagger brush. I might turn this upside down so you can see the action there. Okay, and I'm going to just push the oil around so it actually leaks out onto that ledge. So we got a nice feathered stain in there, and then for the final coup de gras, I'm going to put a very faint line of the dark brown. I'll, I'll leave this angle here, even though we're upside down, and go carefully. There we go. See that? Turn it around. So we've got a nice stained shadow effect on that leg. Time to get into the final stages of weathering on the walker. As you can see on the main body, I've done streaking already on this side. And uh, apart from a few touch-ups there, I'm pretty happy with that sort of random, sort of rough sort of streaking we've got coming out of all these little vents that are endemic to the walker. If I just turn it around, it's time to do this side. So I'm just going to show you the process on how I do it. First grab a, um, a double O or O brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab underneath each of the vents here just a small amount of oil. Now what I've done is I've added uh, the dark brown I found, and I'm going to have to retouch up the other side. The dark brown oil that I've been using to weather the legs and the, and the front here, it's, it's 
not as stark as enough as I want. So what I've done is I've gone into my oil cabinet and I found uh, some Payne's Grey, which is really a really dark, almost a black with a slight blue tint to it. Mix that up with the, the Starship Filth to get that, that dull grey and I've mixed up the dark brown and we've got a bit of a, a dark oil to go with. So let's just put a little bit on. So the technique I'm using here is knowing that the Bandai plastic doesn't like enamel thin thinners that much. It's an almost dry technique. So I'm just going to add a dob of oil under each one of these things. And if I decide not to streak it, I can just use it as a shadow effect. So this one I'll do a bit longer. So you can see that's quite dark. And that's what I want. I'm going to add a little bit more here. And then definitely on these, these major ones. So try to keep... All I'm, all I'm not doing a streak just yet. I'm just adding a dab of oil. Because what I want it to do is dry out for a few minutes. Because the longer I let it to sit there and dry, the the drier I can use my streaking brush instead of having it wet with any spirits or enamel thinner. And by doing that I can um, avoid hurting the Bandai plastic. Okay, so I'm just going around here. While I'm here I'm going to add a bit of shading to this, this element here and I'll just add a little bit underneath these chips. And why not we'll add a bit more down here. So, just depositing a little bit of oil underneath and this is why I prefer to use a separate brush and not the oil brusher goopy eye, eye makeup brush that they include because it's just not controllable enough might be good for big tanks and so forth but not for 1144 so I'm gonna let that sit there for a bit and come back in a few minutes and do some streaking so I'll let the oils dry just for a little bit there and I'm gonna use two of my I'm gonna use my wasp brush and my dagger brush which is almost turning into a wasp brush I've got to give that a good clean it's starting to to separate there and I'm going to try to keep what I'm going to do is I've just dampened them and by damp I mean I'll see if I can show my glove here okay there's barely any moisture on there can you see that barely any moisture now don't worry about affecting the, the plastic that's all one the Bandai plastic that body is all one unit apart from that that main door there so you're not gonna you're not gonna gas it and it's not gonna fall apart on you so let me just get this brush out of my mouth and I'll start doing it. So I've started on this side, you can see that I've started to streak down, so I'll show you what we do. Just put the brush over the, the dry bit and just pull straight down. So that bit of oil that's there, pull it straight down. Okay, you'll see that that one's smudged, which is kind of okay, it's, it's broadened out a little bit, so I might just angle the brush a little bit more. That one almost disappeared, that's fine, this is the beauty of oils because if I don't like it I can come back and completely remove this down this nice door there we're getting a really nice staining on the edge moving over this one and I'm just going to go all the way across and just start to pull these down that's a good one so is that all right so we've got the basics there can you see that now what I might do on some of these especially the ones where that's been muted out is I'll just grab my little O size brush again and I'll just put a little another knob of oil there and we'll just do a bit more and there's a gap in that one so again this is the great thing about using oils and I would encourage you on some of your builds just use oils don't use anything else don't don't be tempted by the penelope of products out there to go oh, I'm gonna use everything no just use one it's actually really it's actually a lot easier to build and to weather when you're only using one product so let's just drag that again. I've got to be careful to keep these properly vertical. Sometimes I'll go like this and I'll go sideways. So I can tell by the, so you've got these panel lines here. Let's see if I can get that properly done. And if we're in focus there, so these are getting, this is why I like the dagger brush. I'm getting a much cleaner, there we go. So i just keep Doing this, keep dragging down, take your time. And we're starting to get some really nice effects there, see that? So I might add a few more up the top here. And also you can use this technique if there's too much, like I might just take these almost all the way. Okay, see so I've removed all those, but I'm actually leaving some very subtle ones. So if you've got too much left on your brush here, instead of wiping it off like, like that, 
start at an edge and just pull it down and you can create some very micro streaks. And you get all these sort of happy accidents. Okay, that's a good start. I want to go a bit more, so let me get into it. I've already done some more on the top there and the head's almost done too. So we're almost finished the all weathering stage. Yeehaw. Using a combo of Tamiya XF10, the flat brown, and some rubber black XF85, I'm using a very dirty brown black to do some soot marks. So you can see how I've added them there, especially on the feet, just you know, as if a lava is just blown up out of the out of the whatever and scorched. We've got a big scorch mark here on the body, and I've done a few under the neck and here. So I'm going to turn it around and I'll see if I can do this on camera, and I'll show you how I do it. Basically, it's a 50-50 mix, so it's actually not that thin. Uh, I want some splatter. So you, what you want to do is just... I'll put some pieces here under this leg here. Okay, I'll zoom in. Basically, I'm just touching the trigger and feathering it in like that, just to make that scorch. So I'll try to do some down here on, on the feet. So I just want to... Nice intense burst there like that, and then just feather in the the effects. I might make it a little bit more intense in the middle, and there we are. So I'm just going to go around and add some more of these scorch marks, and then once I've done that, I've tried it on one. I might try it on a, I might put on more, but I'm going to add a little bit of pigment, some black smoke, and some rocket exhaust, just to make that even more intense. The last effect, I'm going to spray some fluorescent red, fluorescent orange underneath the walker to show a bit of reflection as it's walking past the lava field. So uh, the diorama that I've made for it, it has, if you can imagine this line here on my cutting board, that's where the lava is going to be. So there's going to be a reflection going up and under. So I'm just going to hit the little feet of the walker and I'm going to just lightly shadow or highlight, what do you want to call it, on the underside of the, uh, the body there and see if that actually helps. And maybe a little bit on the on the legs. I've never done anything like this before, so this could foul up very quickly. So let's just get cracking. I'll do the feet first. So I'm getting that red orange tint. I'll try to keep it on this side of the see that it's so I'm trying to get underneath the little toes because that's they're going to be raised slightly all right so using that same angle I see if I can get this on camera I'll try to do underneath in here so I'm getting a bit of a an effect there It's not too bad. Let me get cracking and I'll show you the pictures when I'm finished. I'm a bit worried about this. <laughs> See how I go. Thanks for getting here to the end. This was such a fun project. One of my shelf of doom ideas I've had for more than two years. As you can see, I've also made a dynamic lava diorama because this walker is at the Battle of Sullust. I'll have a separate step-by-step -step video up soon on how I made that diorama, including using LEDs to make the lava glow from beneath. I hope you enjoyed that and learned some of the various weathering techniques you can apply to your Star Wars models, or any other type of model really, and I'd love to hear your thoughts or ideas on how you could do this differently. Stay tuned for more videos, hit the subscribe button, blah blah blah, you know what to do so you don't miss out. You know the drill. That's all for me. Happy modelling.